Hey, what is up guys? My name is Oleg. This is Benita Applebottom. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to do a full review of this watch right here. So it's from a company called Axios. It's a brand new company. This is their first offering. And the name of this specific model is Ironclad, like the warship. The design of this watch kind of reminds me of a mix between a Rolex Submariner and a Tudor Black Bay 58. And I like the design of both of those watches. Uh, this watch will be launching on a Kickstarter in a few weeks time or so. So let's see if it's any good. Just to let you know, this watch right here is a prototype and I'm not keeping it. I actually do have to send it back to Axios watches. Uh, it will probably be sent to more YouTube watch reviewers for reviews. Um, but it doesn't affect the review in any way. Just thought you should know. Now let's talk about the case dimensions for the watch. It has a 40 millimeter diameter, a 44 millimeter lug to lug width. However, if you look at the design of this watch, you notice this first protruding lug. So actually the widest points on the watch are about 51 and a half millimeters apart. The lug width is 20 millimeters and the thickness of 14 millimeters. Here's what the watch looks like on my seven and a half inch wrist. I do like this fit. It's a hefty watch at 164 grams, I believe. So it's not too bad, but it does let its presence known. I wish it was a bit thinner at about 13 millimeters or under 14 millimeters. It's not too bad. It's only one millimeter, but it is a bit on the thicker side. The case material is stainless steel. The finish is pretty good. We have a brushed finish on top and polished finish on the sides of the case. And actually what's interesting that the bracelet here has all brushed finish. So brushed on top and brush on sides, kind of unique uh, to Rolex Submariner homages because usually Rolex Submariner homages would have brushed on top and polished on the sides to match the case finish. This one here took a little bit of a different approach. At the three o'clock position, we have a screw down signed crown with these big crown guards. The crown action is pretty good. And at the back, we have a screw down case back with a pretty nice engraving of a ironclad warship. And one thing to note about this watch actually is that it has 500 meters of water resistance, not 300 meters of water resistance as I would expect actually with this design. So I'm guessing that's why the watch is a bit thicker at 14 millimeters. The crystal on the watch is a double domed sapphire crystal. Gives you some nice viewing angles and the bezel is made out of ceramic. It's a 120 click unidirectional bezel. The bezel action is all right. It's actually a bit difficult to turn. The grip is not great. So it's a bit of a negative. It's actually my first negative with the watch. The fact that the bezel action, it's all right, but the grip on the bezel and the actual feeling of bezel action is not that good. The positive of the bezel is that it's loomed and the loom is actually fantastic. Let me pop a loom shot on the screen right now. Yeah, the watch has impressive loom. In fact, you can see this loom in the fully lit environments. That's how strong it is. If you're a fan of loom on watches, I don't think you'll be disappointed with this one. The watch comes on the stainless steel bracelet and the bracelet is fantastic. It has a nice finish to it. It is a comfortable bracelet, just enough flex on it. Uh, solid end links, solid links, a lot of micro adjustments on the clasp. It is an engineered clasp with this two pushers release mechanism and a fold over guard, screw in pins and a simple logo on the clasp. So really no complaints with this clasp from me. So the watch comes in a few different color combinations. I think there are five in total. My favorites are the Hulk, so the green bezel, green dial version. I also like that Batman, kind of looks interesting with the two-tone bezel. Uh, but I have to say my favorite out of the bunch is the one that they actually provided for the review. This black bezel, black dial version. It does remind me quite a bit of Tudor Black Bay 58, at least in the color scheme. So it's got this red triangle at the zero position on the bezel. It also has hashes for every minute increments all around the bezel. So usually on diver watches, you would see hash marks from zero to maybe 20 or from zero to 15. Uh, they actually took an approach with hashes all the way around the bezel. Some people might like that look, some people might not. I happen to like it. I think it gives this watch a bit of a unique look. Uh, taking a closer look at the dial, so we have this deep black dial with a mini running track all around the dial in a gilt color. We also have our marks all applied. So for the 12, for three, and for nine, there are these kind of triangles with the ends cut off. And for the rest of the hour marks, they're just applied circles. I also like the set of hands, these kind of sword hands. Uh, and I like that the seconds hand reaches out all the way to the minute track. Logo at the 12 o'clock position. Doesn't that logo 
remind you of a Star Trek logo. I think once you see it, you can't unsee it. So live long and prosper. At the six o'clock position, of course, we have a date window. They did a great job integrating this date window with the overall design of the watch. So the background color of the date wheel does match the color of the dial and minimal writing just says automatic and 500 meters of water resistance. The movement powering this watch is a Swiss made Silita SW200, 36 hours of power reserve, 26 joules, beats at 28,800 beats per hour, of course has a date functionality, it is hackable and hand windable movement. Through the Kickstarter campaign this watch will be priced at 399 US dollars which I think is a fantastic price for this timepiece. I don't know what the regular retail price will be, probably, I don't know, 550 bucks, 600 bucks, something like that. But I think at $400, this makes a very attractive package, kind of competing in that Steinhardt price category. Now the watch is not perfect. It does have some negatives, uh, two that I found. Number one, I really don't like this protruding first links. I uh, really uh, need to do something about that. And number two, the fact that you have to order the watch or pay for the watch in September, but you have to wait all the way until February to receive the watch. I understand that launching a watch is not an easy task and it does take some time. It's just a negative for me personally, so I do have to mention it in this video. Other than that, I'm fairly impressed with Axios watches as a brand new company. I'm excited to see what they introduce in the future based on this first model, their first prototype. I think they will have a fairly bright future ahead of them if they don't screw it up. I appreciate you watching this video until the end. Please leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this watch. Are you picking one up? Are you skipping it? Leave all those thoughts below. I always enjoy reading your comments. Of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel, that helps a lot. And by the way, today on my wrist, I'm wearing a vintage Seiko chronograph. I just watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and in that movie, Brad Pitt's character is wearing a citizen bullhead chronograph on his wrist. I know this is not a citizen and it's not a bullhead chronograph, but it kind of inspired me to wear my vintage uh, Seiko Chrono. I did a full review of this watch. That video can be found on the channel. I will also link it in the description below. Also in the description below, there's a secret link. Have a look if you're curious. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Beam me up, Scotty. This thing is bigger than you. <laughs>